Okay, guys. We go, whoa, oh, oh, that's loud. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, of course. Hey, how you doing? Um, so, uh, welcome to the session, the seminar today. Really excited to, um, to to share with you some of the knowledge about how people are using mobile technology at the moment. But of course, where is it going? Um, and what is the future hold for this kind of technology? A little bit of an introduction to myself, I'm Nick, hello. Uh, I work for Cvent. Um, for those of you who don't know Cvent, uh, essentially one of the world's largest event management technologies. Um, so we've got a, a wealth of experience in the industry, how various clients use this technology. Personally, I'm a self-confessed mobile geek. Uh, so apologies, I get overexcited about all this kind of stuff and, uh, and I really, really get excited about sharing this as well, uh, of where it's going. So this is not a linear presentation. Uh, I didn't want to go through it and, and be a kind of, you know, PowerPoint overkill. We're actually going to get you guys a little bit involved uh, to decide what you'd like to hear about and what you'd like to learn about. Quite exciting, right? So what I've got is I've got six different categories uh, on the screen at the moment. I'm going to go through, sorry, I'm going to be running up and down the stage as well. So I'm going to be right in front of this. So there are TV screens at the side and they're giving me some kind of Britney Spears style microphone <laughs> thing here. So I do feel like I need to do a dance as well. Um, so essentially, uh, Completely going off on one about what we're going to do is we've got six different categories. Number one is mobile unleashed. This is all about why people are using mobile technology, how it's involved in our everyday lives, and why it's important for events. The second one is money on my mind. This is all about sponsorship, return on investment. We're investing in mobile apps. How do we get that back? Uh, the third one is nobody likes me. This is all about social media and how we can incorporate that into mobile apps as well. Uh, the fourth one is wearables, one that I get quite excited about, and the future of this and how we're going to be able to incorporate this inside of events. Uh, fifth is gamification. Uh, this is uh, pretty much does what it says on the tin. It's all about gamification, how we can start to, to really engage people further uh, through using games at the event and through mobile technology. Uh, and then the last but not least is mobile powers. It's all about the future of mobile uh, and events and, and where we see this headed. So what we're going to do, by a show of hands, uh, I'm going to go through these and I'm going to see what you guys want to learn about first. So, as a little reminder, uh, those of you who would like to learn about mobile uh, as it is now and why people are using this uh, and how it's involved in our everyday lives, can I see a show of hands? Okay, I'm going to say that's around about 30%. Uh, for the second one, money on my mind, we've invested in mobile, we want to know about ROI and, uh, and sponsorship. Anybody want to learn about that? Okay, around similar, okay, okay, we've got a third one, nobody likes me, social media, how do we incorporate this into events uh, and into mobile technology? Show of hands for that one, a little bit, sorry guys, that one's around about 20 to 25%, we've got wearables, who wants to learn about how wearables are going to be involved in events? Around about 10% wearables are dying to death, we'll probably get through all of these, but I just be a bit of fun to go through this way. Um, and gamification. Who wants to learn about gamification and how to incorporate some mobile? Same as wearables. Okay, okay, we're actually there to, to get onto that. And then last but not least, the future of, uh, of mobile and where we're going to be heading with this. Show of hands for that one. Perfect. That is the winner. Uh, so what I'm going to do to make it a little bit, um, I, I'm going to lie a little bit. I'm going to say that that one I should go to first, but I want to give you guys an idea of to, instead of going straight into where this is heading, where it's been, where it's come from, and why we're here. Uh, so I'll go through Mobile Unleashed, which was the first one we mentioned, and then I'll go straight into the future of this as well, and then we'll come back to it and, and see what you want to learn about next. So first and foremost, I just want to get an idea of uh, how many devices you guys are using at the moment. So a show of hands if you own one smartphone device. Okay, interesting. About 20%. Uh, show of hands if you own two smartphone devices. A little bit more. Three or more. Wow. Yep. <laughs> we are a mobile um, and smartphone oriented room. This is great. I own four. Uh, I self confess geek. Um, so, why are we, are we using this kind of technology? Why do we own three smartphone devices? A few stats from the industry uh, is this is crazy. When I first saw these stats, it blew my mind. We actually check our phones over 200 times per day. This is not 200 times a day. Uh, I see a few people nodding and thinking, yeah, but that's actually not that much for me, to be honest with you. Uh, and me neither. I check it all the time. I do it for emails. I, it's my alarm clock when I first wake up in the morning. Um, it's, it, I use it for everything. I even used it for a, a, to put up a picture on my wall 
I had a spirit level bubble on my phone and used it to put that up. It's crazy how we use this for our everyday life. Um, and actually, the majority of that time is spent on, on apps. On average, we have 65 apps on our phones uh, downloaded. You can count them at the end to see if you're above or below the average. <laughs> Interestingly enough, we actually only use 25 to 30 at any, any given time. What this shows us is people don't tend to delete apps. Uh, and this is really important for events as well. And I'll come back to that in a moment because that leaves the gateway open for as soon as they walk out the door to be able to continue that communication. Now, why is mobile so important uh, at the moment? Now, for the first time, again, something that blew my mind when I first saw it, the first technology that has surpassed TV is mobile. It's now, we, we now spend more time on our mobile devices than we do watching TV. Uh, absolutely crazy, and, and it's completely taken over, and it's, and it's going on, uh, on a, 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 basically increasing uh, year on year more rapidly than TV ever did. Uh, and interestingly enough, there is something called nomophobia. Has anybody ever heard of nomophobia? Yes. Yes, what is it? Um, a fear of being without your mobile phone. Exactly, the fear <laughs> of being without your mobile phone. This is nuts. We've actually got a name for it. It's crazy. Uh, Fifty-eight percent, around half of this room will will actually experience this at any given time, and so much so. I mean, I experience it all the time. And it's that feeling of essentially when you walk out the door uh, and you're on your way to work, you think, "Oh, wait a minute, where's my mobile phone?" And yeah, and you run back, and then you realise it's in one of your pockets, and then the panic's over. I experience this on a daily basis, um, and it's it's crazy, and so much so that I, I recently I was out. Um, I had. Uh, my, my son was born, so I, I did the, uh, it, it's obligatory to go out and get drunk, I believe, when you have a baby, uh, somebody told me that, so I had to go out, and I had to get drunk, I mean, it was, um, somebody forced me to do it, and then I ended up going out, and as I was taking a photo of the night with my family and my friends, uh, I dropped my phone on the floor, and it smashed, and it's this so kind of uh, fragile now, and I was in such a panic for, uh, for two days afterwards, I was without my phone. And my whole life is on my phone. So it's crazy at how much nomophobia I had at that point of not having it with us. Um, now, this is no different to events. The reason why I'm going through this is because this is, these are your delegates. These are the kind of feelings that they have. And so much so that there is a company now, this, uh, this blows my mind, uh, there is a company that actually produces, what, that called No Phone, that produces a, a mimic of a phone that you can buy, which is not actually a phone, so that if you don't have your phone with you, you don't feel as though you've not got it with you. What the hell is that? That's crazy. Uh, it, they, they've, they've sold 10,000 of these, um, and they've actually got a new one now, which is called No Phone Air. Well, you get a box, and then you open it up, and there's nothing in it. You just get a box. Blows my mind. Um, so let's kind of bring this a little bit back to, to events. Uh, now, of course, people traveling to events, how they're going to carry their devices, it's important for adoption rates. Um, so, of course, 99% of hotel guests travel with at least one device. You know people have these devices. We know they're using them, so let's make the most of it. Uh, app usage actually grew 76% last year, and it's still growing. It's not actually hit its peak yet. Um, and it, it's so much so that Gartner actually estimates that there's going to be 268 billion apps uh, that are going to be downloaded by the end of 2017. I just want you to take a moment to think about all of the apps that you have on your device. What kind of apps make your job easier? Now, there are all different kind of apps out there. It can be email apps, social networking, CRM tools. For me, I travel a lot, so I use uh, Conquer Expenses app. This is a dream come true for me. I can take a photo of every receipt I have, and, and it's all stored there, and I can send my expenses through to, to, to my employer. It just works for me because it's really convenient. It's quick, easy access. Uh, this is the same experience that people want at events. Uh, so this is why mobile is so important. And there's two main reasons why we're actually experiencing this, this what we call this app attack, so to speak. The first one is that native apps completely change the game. Uh, now, when I say about native apps, they're the apps that you download from the app store and they live directly on your device. Uh, now. Does anybody know who said this? Actually, there's a, a quite a, a, an interesting quote um, from a, a very famous person in the industry. It says, the biggest mistake we ever made as a company was betting too much on web-based as opposed to native apps. Does anybody know who said that? 
this fella you might recognise, it's Mark Zuckerberg. So Facebook generally believe um, that this is the way forward. Um, now the reason why I bring Facebook into it, interesting start, is that a third of all the time that we spend on our mobile devices is spent on Facebook. Scary, right? Um, so that's why you know this is so important to understand how the big players are using mobile technology in the industry. And through our own studies, uh, we find that people tend to prefer native apps. Uh, so 86% um, of people that we survey prefer native as opposed to 14%. But what's the difference? Uh, it's really tricky looking at this kind of technology in the industry. There's so many different providers out there, it's a nightmare. So some of the things that, that are key to look out for in a native app, um, the, the benefits are that all of that information that you will download for an event is available on the device and it's without a Wi-Fi connection. All the static information is stored. Um, so that's a real key kind of safety net, so to speak, for you. And then the next big reason is that it integrates directly with all the device features. So as you're going through uh, the event, as you are today, you're taking photos, maybe of PowerPoint slides, instead of coming out of the app and then going into the camera on your device, you could do it from inside of the app. The idea is that we want delegates to stay inside of the app. And then last but not least, for me, um, the, one of the key components of mobile apps and native apps is push notifications. These are so wild, wildly underused at events. Uh, and if we think back to the fact that people don't tend to delete apps, push notifications are a way that you can communicate directly to delegates. As soon as they walk out the door of the event, you can still communicate with them. They're a message that pops up directly like a text message would on the device. Uh, interesting stats in the industry show that 97% of push notifications are read, as opposed to 3 to 4% of emails. So it's such a powerful marketing tool. Um, now, of course, uh, you can overuse these. I've been to events where I've had uh, push notifications sent every 10 minutes, and you just get annoyed and you'll switch it off. You think, <laughs> forget that, leave me alone. Um, so there are obvious ways in which we can make sure that, uh, that, that they don't get notifications switched off on the device. And I'll go through that later on. Um, now the, the, whoops, I'm a little bit behind, um, the, the key players here uh, do prefer native, I wanted to make this clear is because Google of course are the Android uh, store, you've got Google Play and, and, and Apple, um, but of course we bring Facebook in because they're a third of what we're doing on mobile devices, um, so it's widely accepted, widely accepted now that uh, this is the way forward. One thing that I definitely would advise is that you don't just want to do native, of course, you want to be able to get a web-based app as well. Uh, the reason for that is because there will be people who turn up with a BlackBerry or a Windows phone and they won't be able to, to download the app. So when you're looking at all this kind of technology, it's key to get both a native app, that'll be around about 80 to 90% of the people, at your, of the delegates at your event, but then of course to cover the rest of the guys who want that web-based version as well. Now, interestingly enough, we, as an example, um, we've seen that we actually put a third of our developers in, uh, a third in Android, a third in Apple, and then a third in web-based. The reason why you have to do that is because there's a lot of people who, a lot of companies who still provide Blackberries to their internal employees, and they'll bring those along to events as well. So, of course, we have to make sure that uh, we think about those guys. So. The second reason um, that, uh, you know, that, that we're having this kind of app attack, this app explosion, uh, so to speak, um, is, oh, the reason why we're having this app attack is what I like to call, sorry, the smart device explosion. I mixed that one up. Um, now, again, I just wanted to kind of bring in a little bit of stats, which I think are crazy in terms of the adoption rates. Um, I'm not going to throw this out there. I'm going to just uh, go through with you. But actually, in, in Q4 of 2014, We've not got any stats on, uh, after that, unfortunately. We're still waiting for them all to come through for 2015 and 16. But actually, there were 827,777 uh, <laughs> iPhones that were sold um, in that three-month period. There is actually more iPhones uh, that were sold in the first weekend that iPhone 6 came out than there was in the whole of the first year uh, that iPhones were out. Uh, again, this is just crazy, and, and this is why we want to bring it back to events in that, you know, even though we know that 95% of meeting professionals uh, are using smartphone devices, the majority of people here are three or more. Studies that we, we saw showed that 75% of event planners in the US are using apps, 48% of event planners are using apps in the UK. We know that people use smartphones, we know that they've got them, uh, but we're still underusing this kind of technology already. So the next one I'm going to go to is mobile power. So this is all about the future. 
and, and where we see it going and then of course we can bring it back in to see what else we want to learn about. Uh, so now we understand why uh, we're using this uh, and how powerful this can be, where is it heading? Uh, now, first and foremost, we, um, we were looking at some stats in the industry that show that 94% of marketers surveyed um, actually stated that personalization was critical to the, the current and future success. I'm a huge believer that personalization, being able to, to, to have somebody who's coming to your event and feeling that it's their event app, their mobile uh, information, that is critical to the future of this technology. Um, and interestingly enough, Fewer than 15% of business businesses implement personalization on a mobile. Uh, so how can we do this? How can we rectify it? Now, to give you an example, uh, something again, an example from uh, from CBAN, um, something that we did. We actually um, collected data from planners, and we went on and we we found out what kind of personality you have in this event planner. So we're asking these series of questions, and then you got through this. Um, this confirmation of which type of planner you are, you're either a natural, uh, you're a challenger, and all these different types. Um, now, it was great for us because we kept that data. Uh, we knew what type of planner you were, so it really helped in the personalization of all of the marketing materials that went out uh, after our events. So we had a large event over in uh, Las Vegas, and then, of course, after that event, we tailored every single piece of communication, the pers personalized notifications, emails based on the type of planner that they were. Uh, now I talked about notifications. One beautiful way in which you can really personalize it uh, is actually segmenting them. So instead of just the whole room downloading the app and having one app for the event, we can actually segment them into three different groups, if you wish. Um, so this side of the room over in the, the cheap seats, hello. Um, this side of the room here are essentially gonna get one notification that nobody else has. Maybe you guys are VIPs you know where the VIP drinks are. Uh, you guys are speakers. You'll get a notification saying, uh, this is where the speakers areas are. Uh, this is, for me, is where this kind of technology is headed. It's not just mobile technology. If you think about the whole management life cycle through registering people for an event, the kind of data that you can collect from one individual and then utilizing that within any information they have. So for example, I've been to an event where I told them that um, you know, the, the type of food that I enjoy eating uh, and then, of course, when I, I download the mobile app, uh, I've got information on, on this where this type of food is. You know, I'd, I'd go to this hall because this will be more preference to me. Uh, that was fantastic. I felt as though it was an app for me. It was a really great way to personalize the experience. Uh, now, 60% uh, of app users actually opt in to receive push notifications. Um, so kind of like downloading the Facebook app where um, you get it and then you opt into notifications. Um, so this is something of a concern we need to be careful of. Uh, we want to make sure that we're delivering the right content to people so that they don't switch off the notifications. So notifications can be sent, of course, during the event as well for any last minute room changes. Uh, any speaker changes. Um, we once uh, had an event of ours where um, we, we had the app and we actually had a last minute room change and we had all these people kind of heading over, it was actually a, a CBET connected them, uh, heading to the keynote room and then it just changed last minute. Uh, it was in a hotel and there was some problems with the AV. So they sent out a notification and as everybody's walking around, all in the same time, they all just kind of turned around and then headed over in the other direction like she But it was fantastic. It was a great way to be able to communicate with them live. Uh, so again, um, you know, personalizing this uh, is a great way of, of, of moving forward with it. Um, and it's, you can schedule them to go out in advance, push notifications as well, uh, or send them out on the fly. Uh, but segmented push, like I said, um, I, I think I've gone through this actually, but segmented push is where, of course, you can personalize it, set your delegates up into different groups. Um, another exciting technology about the future of mobile uh, that, that I get very excited about is beacon technology. Um, this is a show of hands for, you, for those who have heard uh, or even used beacon technology before. Okay, so actually that, that's quite expected. So it is quite new uh, in the events industry. So beacons, for those of you who don't know what they are, uh, they use uh, Bluetooth technology. And essentially you can place these kind of colorful little rock formation beacons um, around here. Yeah, you, you probably recognize them now actually seeing them at events. You can place them around the venue uh, and then this will actually talk to the device. Now, this can be used in a variety of ways. Um, so first and foremost, if you imagine uh, walking into a keynote session, and then as soon as you walk in, that keynote session page opens up, 
imagine then the ability to be able to have that for exhibitors. For those of you who have trade shows, this is where I start to get very excited about it. Because not only um, uh, do we have this location technology, but it's a great sponsorship opportunity. Uh, also, if I tell you as a delegate that I'm going to your event because I'm interested in mobile technology, and then I'm walking through Square Meal here, and then all of a sudden um, I get a notification saying, hey, the mobile technology company is here on your left, don't forget to check them out. That's a great way to personalize it. Um, and this is why, uh, this is where this technology is going. Everything like location-based, like beacons, is going to be personalized. There is one other action as well, of course, when you walk past one of these beacons, it can send a notification directly to the device. Now, these have been used in a variety of uh, creative ways. Um, there was actually an event that I went to, it's an MPI event. Um, it was in Seattle, actually, over in the US. And uh, as soon as we got off the shuttle, we got a notification that was sent, which said uh, the, the check-in desk is over on your right, and then you can drop your bags off to the, to the left, welcome to the event. And it was a really nice way of, of welcoming me. Uh, to the event. So you can really get creative with these. Um, and you can really actually use that, that location to just drive that more, drive further engagement. Uh, again, we spoke about exhibitor booths, but it's not just that. We've had clients uh, before now who've used this for when you're walking past restaurants, it automatically opens up a menu uh, of that particular restaurant. It's a really great way and creative way of using the technology. Uh, and it's a nice way of just kind of driving that more personalized content. Uh, now, interestingly enough, um, beacons are actually not that expensive uh, for those of you who are interested. So uh, there, you can get a, like three beacons for around about uh, seventy to eighty pounds. I think it's a hundred euros. Um, so there's a lot of providers out there. Um, there's a, a handful of them, but essentially, you know, every beacon that uses Bluetooth will work, uh, and you can connect it up to providers. Of course, when you're looking at mobile app technology, uh, it'd certainly be worth asking the provider if they could connect up with the beacons that you have. Uh, but they are relatively inexpensive, so I would urge everybody to just trial it. Have a welcome message uh, as people are walking through the door. Have uh, a beacon at the end of the event. As soon as people walk out, we can automatically send the, the survey to them. Thanks for attending the event. While on your way home, don't forget to fill out the survey, try and increase the response rates. For those of you with ex uh, exhibitions and trade shows, uh, just by a show of hands, how, how many of you um, would uh, host or, or have clients who host trade shows and all have exhibitors at your events? Great, okay, so there's quite a lot um, here. And you've probably seen um, the, these devices, uh, you probably recognize them, which are, whoops, let me go back, uh, which are kind of lightsaber Star Wars style devices, which, uh, you know, you walk up to an exhibitor booth and somebody scans you and it's quite intrusive, like, what are you doing, <laughs> trying to shoot me? Um, and we've got them here today as well. But now, of course, the, the future of this is completely changing, it's completely being disrupted because we've got mobile smartphone technology that can do this. Um, so now, again, for exhibitors, there's a lot of value in having them just download an app where they can scan the badges of people that they meet, record those conversations, and then that will go back to, uh, to them so they can have that live data of everybody in all those conversations that they recorded. Um, so now we're going to go back uh, to our six categories. We're going to see uh, what you guys want to learn about next. So we've got uh, money on my mind. Oh, a question there, yes. Uh, yeah, it's a great question. So the question um, for you guys is that, um, or a concern more than, more than anything, is that Bluetooth uh, usually is something that will be switched off on the device. Uh, so the concern is that, you know, if I'm using beacons, are people going to be able to access these or get these through? Um, so this, the, the interesting point of that is that the use of Bluetooth is actually completely increasing. Um, so with, with Apple Watches, Bluetooth headsets, and, and the, the actual use is going on. We estimate about 50% of people will have Bluetooth switched on the device, 40 to 50%, uh, but now usually leading over. Uh, but actually there are ways around it. So what we can do is as soon as people download the app, uh, then you can have an automated message which says, um, make sure Bluetooth is switched on. Uh, it's as simple as that. This, this uh, app uses location-based services. Uh, but it's all about you guys as well. It's all about the communication. If I'm going to have this kind of technology and I've invested in it, then I'm going to tell my delegates to get excited about it, but make sure they have Bluetooth switched on. Um, so, if, of course, when you're sending out notifications to, or emails to say, this is where you download the app, uh, there may be a little note to say, make sure you have notifications switched on, here's the value, uh, and, and beacons, because here's the value of that. 
Um, cool. So, right, guys, what do you want to learn about next? We've got money on my mind. Um, ROI from this. How do we utilize the app to be able to generate additional revenue? Uh, nobody likes me. Social media. Um, of course, how can we integrate this into, into apps? Uh, wearables, a really interesting technology for the future of, uh, of events. Uh, how can we do this? Um, and incorporate, and then we've got gamification. So, hands up for money on my mind. Okay, uh, yeah, we've got a, a lot of people who want to get the ROI from apps, this is great. Uh, nobody likes me, I feel I'm weird shouting that out on a stage. Uh, okay, uh, I'm guessing money on my mind is winning at the moment. Uh, wearables, uh, interesting technology for the future. Anybody want to learn about wearables? You people, okay. Um, and then, last but not least, gamification. Great, so I'm gonna go through uh, sponsorships and then it looks as though gamification is after that. Uh, and then we should have time to finish on one more, but I'll double check. So let's go through, um, now you've invested in this mobile technology. Uh, you've, you've been saying to your director for, for years that you need to get a mobile app for your event because look at all this great engagement. But how do you prove the ROI? How do you get uh, those budgets increased for next year? Um, how do you generate additional revenue through it? And essentially, is mobile worth the cost? Um, I'm sure this is this is actually a question that I get a hell of a lot from clients. Is you know, Nick, is this generally worth the investment? Is it just one of those phases? Uh, is it going to go out? Um, now, first and foremost, something to bear in mind is that it's not a phase. This is not going anywhere. Digital ad, ad spend has actually overtaken print for the first time ever. Uh, it did do last year. Um, now, it's a little under 40% um, spend on, on TV, but you can see the, the, the direction in which mobile is going. There's no way this is slowing down. Um, now, interestingly enough, TV has kind of stayed steady. There's a, there's a reason for that. It's because we, we're actually not watching live TV anymore. Um, we're, we're recording programs, we're watching it. Uh, online and, and so forth, uh, but actually the spend on that is still kind of staying steady because there's a lot of product placement. For example, Jurassic Park is just one massive uh, Mercedes advert, for example. Um, so there's a lot of product placement, but of course that's always going to stay steady, um, the way that technology is adapting to accommodate that. Um, but the interesting point here is that we're actually now trained to ignore online advertisements. Uh, they've been around for so much that, that we ignore them on emails, uh, on any websites we visit. So mobile advertisers perform five times better than they do online. Now let's kind of go beyond that and go into mobile apps uh, within the mobile. So app sponsorships uh, actually can increase various things. So of course brand awareness, brand favorability, and then the increase that, that purchase intent. But it's actually two times higher uh, than, than general mobile advertising. Uh, so it really helps to generate additional revenue by having it uh, inside of the app. We're not yet trained uh, to ignore those mobile ads inside of events. So this opens up a, a huge opportunity to generate additional revenue. Uh, now, uh, the, the survey that we did actually showed that with event planners, 94% uh, uh, of event planners who are using an app plan to maintain or increase their app spend uh, this year. Uh, now that, tell, that, that shouts volumes to me, that shows me that people who are using this to generate additional revenue can see the value in it. Um, and then the sponsorship I I interest increased by 72% in 2016. Um, there's a couple of main reasons for this. One is because um, it's now a longer term uh, exposure for sponsors. Of course we know that the app is going to stay on people's device, we want it to stay there year round. So they'll get more longer term exposure. Um, but then if you imagine all the metrics that you get from this, everything is clickable and trackable uh, inside of a mobile app. So we can go back to sponsors at the end of the event and say, this is exactly how many people were driven to your website uh, and driven to your organization page. So I'm going to go through a number of different ways in which we can do this inside of the app. I'll give you guys a, a couple of ideas for this. Um, and just think about what your options are and what your game plan is. Here are the top five. So first and foremost, if you have a key uh, sponsor, you've got Tinker Enterprises, um, they, they want to sponsor the whole app. So we can give them a, a full splash screen page, uh, the first page that opens up every time you go into the app. Uh, key exposure, everybody at your event is going to have the app, so of course they'll get that main. It's kind of like the front page of your brochure guide. Uh, and then those in-app banners that are all clickable and trackable. Uh, something that we did uh, for our own event was uh, MGM Grand were actually the, the key sponsor for it. So we give them exposure on the splash screen page, 
Uh, you can see, I don't, have I got a laser? No, I don't have a laser on this one. Uh, but you can see down at the bottom here, we've got the MGM Grand logo, uh, and then of course the banner advertisements that are rotated there have MGM Grand on as well. So we were able to go back to them and and they were, the, the sponsors, especially, you know, the likes of MGM Grand, these sponsors who are, are getting the exposure inside of the app, they'll understand the return. If you tell them that, 5,000 people were driven to their website, they'll know, they'll be able to convert that in, into what that means in, in monetary value for them. Uh, the second way really is sponsor listing the highlighted exhibitors. Um, so for those of you who had the trade show, uh, get the exhibitors um, pinpointed on an interactive map. Uh, a lot of our clients, again, um, you know, charge to, to have this service inside of the app. And as an exhibitor, I'm actually on the CVAD booth today um, some, I've had a couple of people coming up and saying, oh, I've been looking for you guys for the last half an hour. Well, why didn't you just go into the app and have a look? Um, or why are we just you know, kind of get an easy way to be able to, to link to it? Um, so that's a really key way of, of being able to generate that revenue uh, and include those on, on that interactive map. Um, the next way, uh, and we talked about this a lot, is because, there we go. Um, push notifications for me are, are just worth the investment in mobile alone. They're, they're so powerful if used in the right way. Uh, and then if we imagine again the ability to be able to generate revenue, uh, we have clients who sell five notifications over the course of, of three months um, and have that as part of a package in order to, to generate that additional revenue. Uh, and of course we're communicating with, uh, with sponsors by saying 97% of these are going to be read. Uh, Against three to four percent of emails, it's a crazy statistic, and it's worth uh, a lot for for sponsors. Uh, and of course, these can go through in various ways. You add a lot of value. Um, you send a notification out saying, "Don't forget to don't forget to join us at uh, Tinker Enterprises World Event," um, and really encourage attendees to to, to actually go to exhibitor booths as well. Um, it's not just uh, after the event, before, but actually during. Uh, let's get people to these key sponsors. Uh, surveys are another really great way uh, of generating additional revenue through it. So um, surveys, again, uh, they've always been a bit of a pain because uh, we've got people are using paper surveys, people are using online web-based surveys, people are using surveys inside of the app. The key here is that the, the best way to increase the response rates uh, through surveys is to have a native survey inside of the app so they don't need a connection to log in. You're not waiting five seconds for anything to load. To, to load. Uh, when we start getting impatient. Um, and then, of course, having that quick, easy access so it's inside of a session page, for example. Um, but the way that we can increase revenue from this is actually selling surveys as part of a package to exhibitors. Uh, and of course, they get a lot of value because they're getting exposure, people driven to their page, uh, but actually they can ask whatever they want. They can collect as much information from people uh, and fill out those surveys once people visit their booths. And last but not least, gamification. So uh, I had a, a really great example of gamification, um, the way that this was used as a sponsorship package. And it, it's a recent client of ours, I can't uh, name them for, for obvious reasons, but they had a, a big marketing event, uh, lots of exhibitors, and they actually charged uh, each exhibitor for a challenge inside of the game. Now the challenges are photo based, so it was basically you had to go and take photos and then you collect points for the challenges that you complete and the photos that you take. And they had, you know, various things uh, that they sold. And one exhibitor actually had a little robot about this size on the booth, um, which absolutely had nothing to do with what they were selling, uh, nothing to do with the product line or the business. But one of the challenges was go and find out the name of the robot. Um, so of course everybody's going, up, going hey, well, you know, I've got this game, what's the name of the robot? Um, and then the exhibitor was saying, well, you know, tell me a little bit about your business uh, and then I'll, I'll tell you what the robot's name is. And it was a really great way of driving that interaction. It was quite good fun. Um, we've, we've had coffee machines on our booth before now and, and had challenges where I go and have a coffee with the Crown Compass team, uh, the CVAN team. Um, and of course, you know, people are driven to us and we have selfies, we have a great time. It's, it's, one of, it's a really nice icebreaker as well. Uh, some people coming up saying, hey, you know, I've got this game, want to take this photo. But by the way, my name's John, nice to meet you. It's, it's a really nice way to break that ice. Um, and of course, uh, you can actually start to really um, personalize these and customize those challenges. Uh, and allow prizes for them. Um, so, uh, of course, if we kind of recap on the advertising summary, so there are uh, very many different ways in which you can generate revenue. Uh, I would focus, if, I, if, if you take a couple of things away from this, uh, two main things, it's a longer term exposure for sponsors because people are not deleting apps anymore. And two, 
really clear, measurable ROI from clickable and trackable uh, advertisements inside of the app. Now, in terms of ROI, I don't just want to focus on the monetary side of it, but actually, uh, there is a lot beyond the metrics. Um, now, the, the ability to be able to edit things on your, on your event and on your app in real time will save um, we'll save time for your team. Of course, we're now looking at reducing printing costs, we're looking at uh, reducing workload with the ability to be able to edit on the fly. So there's a lot of other uh, in return that you can get on the investment. Cool, so next thing uh, I think you guys wanted to run through is the gamification side. Uh, again, I get quite excited about this. Uh, I, am a, I used to be a bit of a gamer. I'm not so much anymore. I do have apps on my phone. I've got the Countdown app. Uh, don't judge me, it's amazing. You've got to download the countdown app. If you sat on the tube, it's great. You can, like, you know, and it challenges your brain a little bit as well. My brain tends to just go a little bit, if I'm not doing anything, I'll be eating anything for a while. So it helps. Um, but hey, I digress. Uh, so let's go to, no, not nobody likes me. We've, already, we've not been on that one. Let's go to gamification uh, and see how people are, are using uh, gamification as a means to get further engagement through, through the app. Uh, so first and foremost, what is gamification? Um, what does that tend to mean? Now, it's essentially adding game mechanics to a non-gaming activity in order to engage. Uh, and the best way to describe it, um, I saw this quote uh, a, a while back, and I just thought this is the best way of describing adding gamification to events. Um, this is most processes designed uh, around function and, and efficiency, but games, however, uh, have a sole focus of pleasing the human in the process. This is why it's so engaging. Uh, we all grew up playing games. Um, I remember playing Scrabble, um, trying to well, make up words to be my older brother, but that's a different story. Um, and you know, now I play that on my phone as well. And we'll all see people on the tube in the morning. It is crazy now uh, how many people are playing Candy Crush. Uh, I've never played it before, I'll, I'll be honest with you, but I see them all the time playing it. And it's, it's crazy how people are interacting. Um, events are no different. We can utilize that emotion. Uh, the fact that people enjoy this kind of interaction um, and, and incorporate into games. A great example of how we can kind of facilitate that, that emotion is actually a company called Car2Go. Um, this is interesting what they're doing is because uh, what they actually have a car sharing st service uh, and they actually give drivers an eco score. So they constantly get updates uh, for, for acceleration, deceleration, for cruising, uh, and they include game mechanics. So what they do is that the better you drive, uh, then the, the, the more the tree grows, uh, or then birds appear, and then if you become a really good driver, you get a squirrel that appears on the screen, and then if you're an amazing driver, you get a rainbow. Um, I'm probably thinking this is quite dangerous, actually, so if you see a squirrel running across the screen, I'll screech to a halt, maybe it's a little bit dangerous, but actually it's, it's worked really well in, in ensuring drivers are driving uh, more eco-friendly. Uh, it's trying to reinforce that driving uh, responsibility, and of course, driving further engagement, so it's quite exciting. Um, but why should event planners use gamification? So first and foremost, it can really start to, to give fun, engaging uh, ways to, to, to meet and actually network with each other. Uh, we are a selfie-obsessed uh, society now, and, or a withy. If it's more than one person, it's a withy. If it's selfie, uh, it's just yourself. Um, but of course, we're so obsessed with taking these photos. And we want to we share experiences. Mobile is a great way to do that. Events are no different. This is why we're here. We connect with each other, and this technology is not taking the place of that. It's, it's facilitating that. Uh, and this is where gamification comes in. So we've got Elvis here. I don't know what Elvis is doing there, but he's, uh, he's engaging with uh, a bunny rabbit. This is the weirdest event ever. Um, and then we've got you know, a, a challenge maybe that says, find Elvis and go take a photo with him. Uh, of course, we can get that further engagement. Uh, but also, from the trade show side, connecting with exhibitors as well. You score 300 points by taking a photo with, with Jim uh, at his booth. And then any internal conventions or internal events, uh, we've had people who've actually used gamification uh, to then drive uh, internal challenges or in, you know, kind of internal goals. So you know, we all know our goal is 10% growth in 2015, so go find enough nine people that you can go and take a photo with. Uh, there's a lot of various creative ways in which you can do that. People will then climb a leaderboard uh, and then, of course, on that leaderboard, uh, you've got a lot of competitive people. The competitive edge actually comes out quite a lot with people that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Uh, I get very competitive with it. 
Um, and I, you know, to the point where I'm still playing this a month after the event's finished, and you know the prize is still gone, but I want to be at the top of that leaderboard. Uh, and it's crazy how, how people get with this. And a lot of um, clients that we have, a lot of events that I've been to and people I've spoke to in, in various events, um, would actually then use, use this and actually incentivize people. Um, of course, there's going to be value there. So maybe a, a free registration for next year's event or uh, you, you win an iPad. Um, this guy's won an iPad. I'm hoping it's not one of those no phone I, uh, air iPads, but we'll soon find out. Um, so this is a really great way um, to be able to incorporate game mechanics and get people interacting. Now, I want to just, um, I think I'm probably going to get through everything, which is quite, quite strange. Uh, I've, got, I've got five minutes left. I thought it was on till half past. Okay, well, well let's finish with, so this is the future of technology. Uh, I want to make sure that we're finishing with something that I'm quite excited about, which is wearables. Uh, so wearables essentially, uh, are um, the, 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 we've been using them for you know getting fit um, like counting steps and so forth originally, uh, but you know is this is this really how we should be using them? Is it is that where it stops? Um, of course these are really helpful, but actually it doesn't stop there. Uh, there is a hell of a lot more that we can do with wearables, and it's a very exciting technology. Now. To give you an idea as to why we're excited about this and why we don't think it's going away, each new computing cycle uh, for the last 70 years has actually increased tenfold. Um, and wearables are no different. It's not going anywhere. I mean, could you imagine in 2008 that all your family, all your friends would have iPhones? And nobody would envision that. Um, so it's really exciting where this is going. Uh, now, of course, um, there are, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a really big deal. Um, and and it, it, because this is not going away, we want to learn about how it's being used, maybe outside of the events industry. Uh, now, I'm going to show you guys a video um, of how this is being used at the moment to try and see um, how this technology is developing. quite sure the sound's working on this, but basically um, there's a voiceover. Um, and let me just explain what's going on here. So this device is designed to specifically detect your medicine. Now the little band-aid, it also measures your physiology. So we're going to detect your heart rate, your heart rate variability, your respiration. So we've got a lot of information now about the drugs you're taking and how you are responding as a consumer or a patient. That device has a Bluetooth radio and it's paired with your phone. We send all of that data to the cloud, and then we build applications. And the applications are tailored into a use case that's specifically relevant to your situation. That's crazy. Uh, so that's a company called Proteus, where they'll give you a chip, you swallow it, and then it links to your mobile device, and then that will give you all of your health information. That's scary as hell. Um, now, just to, uh, just to give you an idea, I've, I've not got long left, so I'm going to rush this along, but that is actually available now. That was FDA approved two and a half years ago. This is how quickly this technology is moving. Uh, now, another technology that you may have seen is augmented reality. Um, and of course, Google Glass, uh, we all know, we, we, we've all seen. Um, but do we all want to walk around with these kind of crazy weird headsets? It's not necessarily um, been uh, you know, mass produced. Um, and it's, it's always kind of failed in, in feeding information to devices and so forth. But, uh, there is actually something quite exciting that I want to show you guys, which again will certainly be seen uh, at events in a few years. Look around. Technology is all around us. We use it in every aspect of our lives. It enables us to do amazing things. But what if we could go further? What if we could go beyond the screen? This is the world with holograms. What will they enable us to do? New ways to visualize our work. I have an idea for the full tank. New ways to share ideas with each other. How are things going your way? I just 
put the images in one drive. Place of the old one. No. And tighten here. Yeah. I'm going to stop it there. Seems crazy, doesn't it? Um, how far we've come. Uh, I, I love that video. I generally get really excited about it because not only am I excited about the technology, um, this is something that we will see uh, at events in future because wearables are not going anywhere. Um, now, of course, if we imagine that we're walking down an exhibition hall, and then all of a sudden uh, we're able to tap on the different collateral uh, that, we're, that we want to view and we want to get sent to us. Uh, we see uh, various different things. We go to a bar and we see floating above different bottles of drink that they've got available. It's crazy and it's really exciting. Um, and this is something that we need to start thinking about now. So that brings me to the end. Uh, I'd like to thank you guys very much. Um, have we got time for questions? Yeah, one or two questions, perfect. So, uh, any questions at all from you guys before we finish off and I get chucked out of the room? <laughs> no? Fantastic. It's drink time. Uh, go and get yourselves a champagne. But well, thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you.